Hey guys, Cam's 97 so 171. I am um, Monday morning. And now. truck there to get out of the way. Headed up to General Motors Defiance. Sorry if the windshield's dirty. I tried cleaning it. quarter over here is not working for some reason. A whole bunch of it's coming out over on that side and none of it out over here over here. I gotta be careful with this pole over here on the left, so I need to cut to the right a bit. Why don't you pull all the way forward, you know? People are so fucking stupid, it's unbelievable. People here do that all the time. I know trucks come in and out, and they park like four feet from the freaking curb, and then their car's sticking way the hell out, so you can't, it's harder to get by. People just don't pay attention, pretty much. be a warm one with no AC. It's only going into the 70s, but still. Yes, I'm still driving this old truck. I got to call today and find out what's up with mine. It's back from Cummins. It's back at the uh, company repair shop having some other stuff done to it. I have no idea what.
I'll tell you what, I really wish I had me a Monster Energy drink this morning. Plenty of sleep, I'm just feeling a little dragging ass today, you know? Nice, I had... I had, uh, almost three days off. I got home about one o'clock in the morning on Friday. And, uh, had all day Friday and Saturday, Sunday. And I don't have, I'm not, and I'm not having to roll at, you know, two in the morning today, which is good, because about most of the last week was that way. Wow, well, I was, whoa, birdie. The bird pulled out right in front of me there. Um, not really leaving early, but leaving late and getting home late. And that's just as bad. at this light. I got a green arrow up there at the next light, but you can't make it. By the time you get there, it's yellow. And then you gotta wait for those people to go ahead. So if you kind of go slow, usually they all get their asses moving. And then I don't have to stop. Yesterday was really nice, so I got up and 
went out and finished putting the uh, Yamaha back together. I had, uh, I don't know if I told you, I finally got the title all taken care of and it's on the road, tag titled, ready to go. But um, I took it out on the ride last week and it was making a funny noise. Uh, once you rode it around for about 15 minutes, or at like partial throttle, it was making kind of a tingy, knockety noise. I mean, it's a two-stroke, so, um, and I thought, well, maybe it's running a little bit lean. I wasn't sure what that would sound like. So I pulled the choke on it, noise went away. Uh, also, it bucks and kicks a little bit when you're, when you, as you come off the throttle, and you're just sort of off the throttle, like, coasting along, it kind of bucks and kicks a little bit, and when the, when the choke is pulled, it doesn't do that either. Um, so I thought, well, it's, you know, something wrong with the carburetor, and it's 34 years old, and hasn't been ridden much, and so I took, pulled the carb off, and pulled it apart and looked at it, and the thing looked absolutely clean as a whistle inside. Sprayed it out anyway, put it back together again, and got that put back together on Sunday, and, um... Then I went out for a ride, drove, rode about, I rode about 85 miles. Basically went from Florence up to my buddy's house, up in Hamilton. And we went out to eat at a really kicking ass, really good, authentic Mexican restaurant. And I am really sorry, but at the right at the moment, I cannot remember what the hell the name of the fucking restaurant was. Um, I'll, I'll get the information and put a link. You live in the area, you definitely ought to try it out. Try it out. Uh, it's a local place. It's not a national chain. It's a. It's really good. Very authentic. You know, not Taco Bell, not Acapulco's. It's authentic Mexican food. Um. That is very good. Um. I had to go. Uh, I got up there and <laughs> my oil light was flickering a little bit, telling me my oil tank was a little bit low. So I was like, well, shit. So I went over to, uh, went to Rural King, my tractor supply on steroids, and they didn't have any two-stroke oil. Um, however, I did get these jeans. They had, uh, they got jeans on at 10 bucks. And actually, they're nicer. The material is a little thicker than the ones you get at Walmart. Uh, I get the carpenter jeans at Walmart because, you know, I, I pretty much destroy them doing this job. I'm constantly tearing them or getting them muddy or dirty, whatever, you know. And um, these are nicer, and they had my size. They had a, they're a little big in the waist. That's okay because when I'm sitting, they're looser on me, which is probably good. And I got, I got the suspenders to hold them up. And, uh, um... Um, but they're 29 inch leg length, which is what I prefer, and almost nobody carries it. So I got I picked up the blue jeans. They didn't have the oil. Rode down the street to uh, um, AutoZone, <laughs> which I don't know why I didn't think of that first. And they had a, val a two-stroke oil, multi-purpose two-stroke oil by Valvoline, uh, the Valvoline brand. And on the back of it, it clearly said it was for premix or for uh, injection. So, uh, I, went, I bought some of that and put it in there. And, um, I have no idea what the hell they're doing right here. This exit from Mitchell always backs up, so the, the thought is that they're going to make an exit here. But they've torn down all the trees. That hillside used to be covered with trees. Now it's not. I mean, it looks like they're going to build some kind of an off-ramp, but I have no idea. Um, picked up some oil, filled up the tank, and had a little left over, actually. So I wrote down the mileage, and I'm going to find out, uh, you know, what what rate, how many miles do I get out of a tank, out of an oil tank on that on that bike? I kind of need to know that if I want to take it out on a, on a longer ride. Um, 
also to help calculate my expenses. Um, I'm sure I can buy two-stroke oil cheaper than what I paid. I mean, it's five. It was like five or six bucks for a quart of it at AutoZone. I'm sure I can get it for less in a bulk tank, you know. Um, but I need to know the rate of consumption, average rate of consumption. I mean, it varies with throttle. So, uh, but to get some basic idea. But I averaged 70 miles to the gallon uh, on the trip, which is not bad for, uh, for a two-stroke. Also, uh, when I pulled that carburetor off, you know, like I said I cleaned it, and for like almost all of the ride yesterday, it didn't do make do that weird noise. Uh, it did a little bit on the way, uh, almost all the way home, it started doing it. But uh, I think it's just the way I think it's the way it sounds. Just not used to a two stroke. But um, I pulled the spark plug, and it just had a nice light chocolate color, which is what it should look like. So I don't know. I think it's fine. Ordered a battery for it. It's pretty funny. I'll, I'll post the pictures if I, if I get a chance to. Oh, I do edit these videos, so I should be able to get the pictures in there. I get the hell out of the way here. Um, I was reading through the, the manual. You know, the, I was having trouble with the turn signals not working. Brake light wasn't working correctly. And uh, the headlight works, and the tail light would work, but the turn signal didn't work right, and the brake light would go off when you'd apply the brake pedal. Um, so I was like, all right, something's not right. So I, I've got a repair manual for it. And it's uh, the key components of your electrical system. Battery, regulator rectifier, generator, and ignition CDI, there were some others, you know, like five or six major components, and I'm like, battery? It's kickstart. I didn't think it had a battery. <laughs> and uh, so I started digging around in it and I found the battery and um, yeah. Um, I'll show, I'll, I'll pause here for a minute, give myself a chance to stick the picture of the battery up Okay, so that's the picture of the battery. Um, can you guys figure out why that maybe the electrical system wasn't working right? Yeah. <laughs> battery was completely dry, and it's the original battery. It says September 1977 on the side of the top of the battery. And it's a 6-volt battery, which I didn't know. I figured it would be a 12-volt system, even in 77. Um, but it's a 6-volt it's system, which made it kind of difficult. Nobody had a battery. And, um, battery's supposed to show up today in the mail. So, uh, we'll see. Hopefully, when I put that in there, uh, the electrical system will act a little more normal. But overall, it runs real good. Oh, it's, uh, Pretty zingy for a 175. I mean, it's not a big motor, you know. But it's fun. It'll, even with my fat ass on it, it'll pretty easily do a wheelie first gear. Uh, you hit second gear, you know, hard, it, uh, it'll lift the front wheel a little bit too. It's just so light. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it looks like it'll do maybe 60. Uh, 60 or 65 at the most. Um, I'm thinking I can put a couple, reduce the rear sprocket, maybe drop it a couple of teeth, get a little bit more speed out of it. I can certainly live with a little bit less acceleration. Uh, it's fun the way it is, but I really don't need to be pulling the front wheel off the ground. So uh, I could certainly go with a, a taller ratio. Uh, you know, two, maybe two, two teeth something like that. The odometer is 
seems accurate. The trip, it's got a trip counter. It seems accurate. It was within over the 85 miles. It was I I, I go, used Google Maps and figured out what my trip was, and the discrepancy was like less than half a mile. So uh, well, that was pretty good. It's weird though on the trip trip counter. Normally on those, you know, you 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 roll you roll the roll the thing and it it, it goes. You know, let's say you're at, let's say you're at 80 100 miles. When you roll it, it's like you know, it, it goes back by big numbers. This one doesn't work that way. It rolls back individually. You just roll. So from 85 miles, it's like you turn it and turn it. It's like 85, 84, 83, 82, 81. <laughs> it takes a while. I've never seen one like that. It's pretty weird. The only other weird thing is the headlight keeps moving. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I took it off because the headlight was in there cockeyed. So I took the, the housing apart and looked at it. and I, It was very difficult, but I rotated the headlight straight. Well, by the time I got up, by the time I got north, uh, the vibration, it, it just it starts rotating to the side. It's pretty weird. I'll have to figure out why that is. It's just got these little tension springs on the back to hold the bulbs to the housing. So, maybe a little spot of uh, RTV or something, you know, just to provide a little bit of friction in there so it doesn't move so easy. But it was a bitch to get it to move, so it's, it's kind of weird. And it's going to kind of suck because being 6 volts, not like I can really, you know, get a whole lot of aftermarket. Um, you know, I can't just go buy an aftermarket headlight because it's 6 volts. And it kind of sucks. Although, you know, the headlight actually is pretty bright. So may not need it. Once that battery's in there, I bet it'll operate a lot better. But, it's a fun bike. Uh, my wife picked up a helmet. So, I'm thinking she's preparing to start riding her scooter more this year. She really didn't ride it at all last year. And I'm hoping she gets into riding a little bit more, and if she does, I might consider getting a, a bigger scooter for her, maybe a Honda Helix. Got to have a low seat height, and a lot of the scooters don't have low, low seat height. But, uh, you know, Honda Helix would be big enough that we could both ride it. We could go two up riding if we wanted. But um, it's a really comfortable scooter. So we'll see. But I'm not dropping money on a scooter that I don't really need unless she's going to be, unless she wants to ride, you know, more regularly. So why I bought a $500 scooter because, you know, she doesn't have the interest in riding as much as I do, and I didn't want to spend a lot of money on something I wasn't sure she was going to use. I've ridden it a lot more than she has, but it's a little small for me, and it'll only do about 40 or 45 or 50-ish, and um, it's a little nervous. You get to 50 miles an hour, and tiny little 10-inch wheels with a really short wheelbase. It's it's really twitchy. It's fun in town, though. I mean, it's it's real easy to ride, you know, uh, around the town. So the Helix is a lot longer wheelbase. Um, 
which means it'll ride a lot better if it's more stable, but it's harder to maneuver, you know. I mean, because it's a longer wheelbase, you know, getting in and out of a parking space or maneuvering it in the garage, you know, whatever. Um, have a rural king in your area, definitely go check one out. It's like Tractor Supply Company on steroids. They had just all kinds of cool stuff. I definitely want to go, I'll go back, I really ought to go back and get a couple more pair of these jeans. They're very comfortable. And for ten bucks, man, kind of hard to go wrong. I maybe pick up some, I didn't really look at the clothes, ugh, I didn't really look at the clothing that much. Uh, maybe see if they got some t-shirts too. I could use some more t-shirts for uh, the summertime. on YouTube, uh, looking at uh, two-stroke, uh, the old Detroit two-stroke engines they used to use in trucks, 
and uh, it's uh, you guys you like you like if you like engines and stuff uh, do yourself a favor and uh, do a YouTube search for uh, Detroit Diesel two-stroke Detroit Detroit uh, two-stroke diesel uh, you'll find some cool videos really cool engine I don't know when they quit using them I think late 70s or early 80s I, I don't I don't really know for sure but uh, they make a really really cool sound it's supposed to be pretty bulletproof too oh he's got a bust the tire There's a uh, pilot up here. But, uh, yeah, they're really cool. Um, they are, and they're all really cool. It doesn't matter really what engine it is. They made everything from single cylinder engines that were, I think, used for, like, generators and stuff. Um, I believe they had an inline four, V6, V8, V12, and there's a um, V24 also. Some of them, they're all, they're all supercharged. Um, they have a blower. Uh, not really a pressurization system. It basically moves air uh, through the engine. It has to have an air. It has to have. It's a forced air system. Without that blower, it won't run. So uh, the blowers on top don't really provide any pressure or very minimal. Um, sometimes they're turbocharged. Also, sometimes they're not. If they are, then you got the turbos on, obviously off the exhaust side. They pressurize the air to the blower, and then the blower just blows that pressurized air into the engine. Um, basically, just an air pump. So the blower, just an air pump, moving air from outside to inside. But uh, they're really cool. And but I mean, I think what killed them was the fuel consumption. Uh, there, the fuel consumption is terrible on them um, compared to our compared to our modern four strokes. And nowadays, you know, that's such a big part of the industry. But they're, they're, they're supposed to be pretty, when they're running correctly and they're maintained correctly, my impression is that they're, they were very reliable. They tend to start pretty quick. If they're running correctly, a couple of revolutions and they light. Uh, and they don't really need, they really don't need a lot to get going. Um, so they were used in... A lot of times they were used in like generators and stuff too, because they're they don't fuel consumption really isn't that big of a deal, especially for a temporary standby generator that doesn't run all the time. Now, your more important thing is that it starts quickly and is reliable. Uh, you know, if you're only going to use it for a short periods of time. Obviously, if you're going to run a generator for you know days or something, then obviously fuel consumption is a concern. But uh, the simplicity of it is kind of is, is important. I mean totally mechanical engine, there's no electronics in it, um, so it'll run, you know, end of the world situation, nuclear, holocaust, you know, Mad Max type thing, two-stroke Detroit would run, as long as it's got fuel, it'll run, and it would probably burn just about any heavy oil, vegetable oil, used vegetable oil, it'd probably run on just about anything. So, uh, I've seen, it's kind of weird, I've been seeing kind of a, a uh, you know, I spend a lot of time on YouTube just looking around. I've seen a lot more Detroit engines showing up, people showing them off, rebuilding them. The other thing that I found was people are taking, and I'm not going to get the model number right, Cummins made, made a four-cylinder and six-cylinder diesel. Uh, I think the four-cylinder is like 3.9 liter. Totally mechanical. There's no electronics. 
they made a six cylinder engine too, which is not the not the six liter I don't think it's in like your modern Dodge pickup. It's a different engine than that. Um, I think it's an older variant, but anyway, people are putting those, those the four cylinders, you know, in their uh, in pickup trucks because uh, you can get a bell housing to mount to just about any transmission. Um, I don't remember what the horsepower was. I think it was under 200 horsepower, but it was 420 or 450 pound feet of torque. So, uh, certainly adequate for uh, most lighter truck applications. And again, you know, reliability, it's mechanically injected, uh, they pretty much run forever. So, people are seeing some rebuilds on those and people putting them in various makes and models of trucks. That'd be a cool vehicle, you know, get an old four wheel drive pickup and drop that thing in there. Man, I think it'd be great. I can't remember what the hell the name of the model was, though. Four... I, I don't know. can't remember. The uh, Detroit, the way, they're la the way they're designated is by the cylinders, um, and then the cubic inches per cylinder. So... I, uh, the one I know off the top of my head is the 12V71. So it's 12 cylinder V configuration. I assume that's what that's for. And then it's 71 cubic inches per cylinder, which gives you about 800 and something cubic inches, uh, which is actually smaller than most. I mean, it's like 13, I, I figured it out. It's like 13, uh, 13 point something liter. And, you know, that's, that's, I mean, that was the biggest Detroit, really, they put in trucks back then. And that's really not that large of an engine. I realize it's two-stroke, and that totally changes everything. But uh, 13 liters is about the smallest engine you're going to four-stroke you're going to find uh, in the market nowadays. But uh, yeah, it's kind of weird. I'm just starting to find more uh, more stuff on old-school diesels, and. Um, I've looked around and I can't find any around this area. I would love to find an old, well, old, um, Chinese built diesel. There were a lot of them sold a while back. They're no longer allowed to be imported. Thank you, EPA, uh, for taking away a, a very nice option for us. Um, most of the ones I've seen, they're horizontally laid out, mechanically injected, of course. Simple crank start. Some of them have electric start, too. And I believe they're based on a very old Yanmar design. Uh, I could be wrong. Or maybe it's a Lister. Lister. Maybe it was a Lister design. Maybe that's what it was. I can't remember now. But it's an old, old design. Very reliable, heavy-duty not a light engine at all. It's very heavy. Uh, it's liquid cooled, but most of them just it's got a it's got a water jacket and a like a hopper on top of it. And you pour water in the hopper, and it just the convection just circulates the water, I guess. And it just you know that's it. Some of them came with a radiator also, but uh, very simple design. I see people, uh, if you go on YouTube and look, Chinese diesel, uh, Chinese diesel generator or whatever, there are a lot of different variants of it. I'd love to pick up one of those, go buy a generator head from a, from Harbor Freight, mount it up. Uh, the fuel consumption would be just freaking amazing. They're five, like five horsepower, um, but the torque on them has got to be at way more than enough to turn a generator. And they're small enough diesels that they'll turn over 3,000 revs. Um, you know, so you can do direct direct shaft to shaft on a generator. Most people don't do that. Most people run a, a belt on the big flywheel 
and reduce it down on the generator side and run the engine at about a thousand RPM because it's got enough torque that it doesn't need to be revving that much. And obviously less wear and tear and more fuel consumption, better fuel consumption. Um, but I, I've looked on, on eBay and I've, I mean on uh, Craigslist locally and there just aren't any around. I don't think they were I don't think they were imported that long, and then the EPA, probably in 2005 or 2007, when the new diesel emissions for cars came out, the EPA put a squash on all, all those diesel engines. And if any of the Japanese built stuff is just sky high price and from what I've read most of the Chinese diesels are pretty decent um, they vibrate a lot you know they're not really high tech but fairly reliable I guess you could always get it you could always end up with one with a piece of crap but I would just really like to have a some kind of diesel. Something you can crank over by hand, you know, no glow plugs or anything, just like totally done over here. They left this go all freaking winter long. God knows why. Like all they had to do was like sweep sweep up the debris in the middle of the road and open the damn lane. They're doing some painting up here on this bridge now, but they weren't all winter. It, it, it's uh, funny how these can, how construction gets done. There's a road down near me where they're redoing the road completely. It's going to like move the whole road. But they are way, way far away from being anywhere near done. As you're coming north on this road, there used to be a small you know, lane in the right-hand side to turn right. So people turning right could, could go, you know, on red and, and, and alleviate some of the traffic problems. Well, they put a <laughs> they they put a telephone a metal telephone pole right in the middle of the right hand turn lane. There's no lines up, there's no lights. It's probably gonna be a year and a half until they're ready to put blacktop down. And move and actually move the road, but they just had to put that light pole right in the middle of that turn lane, right now. The traffic backs up like terribly because you can't turn right. You got to go around the pole to turn right. The logistics of that. Let's put a telephone pole that we're not going to need for two years right in the middle of the lane people are using right now. It's like you couldn't have put the pole in in a year and a half, you know, when you were like, when you needed it. <laughs> kind of bizarre. I mean, it would be one thing if they needed to put the pole there because they had to use it to hold wires while they were doing construction or something, but the pole's just sitting there. There's nothing, there's nothing hooked up, hooked up to it, no wires. You know, obviously it's going to be used. It'll obviously is going to be used when the road's done. <laughs> you just wonder. 
I mean, everybody makes mistakes, but Jesus Christ. It's because the road engineers don't actually drive on the roads they engineer. Oh, God almighty. I really fucking hate this truck. audio from that camera, generally, because it's better audio. Oh, here we go. Oh. Unreal. audio from that camera, but the video from this is the primary and that is the secondary. Um, but apparently the frame rate's not the same. That camera records at a slightly different frame rate than the GoPro, and even if I sync it, by the time I get partway through the video, or halfway through the video, the audio and it's off sync a little bit. There's nothing I can do about well, I'm going to look into it. There may be something I can do about that. Apparently Adobe Premiere will adapt and correct that, but I don't have that program, and honestly, it's more editor than I really want to get involved with. Um, I need to check and see if what I'm using has some option for that. What I might have to do is take that video, compile it in the editor, change the frame rate, if it'll let me do that, I'll have to look, then use that video in the editor to merge, and then they'd be synced, maybe. Ultimately, what I'm going to do, when I get a new HD GoPro, this camera will be where that one is, and the new GoPro will be on my head, and the new GoPro has a microphone input, so I can put a plug and have like a, a quality microphone like mounted like right here or maybe somewhere in the truck. Okay, let's go guy. What the fuck are you waiting for? written fucking invitation to accelerate. But, you know, I gotta use what I got right now, so other things are pressing and can't justify 300 bucks for a GoPro right now. Particularly until I figure out why uh, the ads are not working on my page. And I know maybe you guys don't really appreciate, or maybe you appreciate not having any ads, but the reality of the world is it costs me time and energy to do these videos. I enjoy doing them, 
but if I can make a little bit of money on the side with it, um, you know, I, I'm going to try to do that. But I've got everything set up at you on YouTube that it should have ads. Uh, my friend Chad, theratracelosers.com, uh, check his page out. Um, you know, his ads are working and he's got like, you know, 10 subscribers and maybe 10 or 10 videos or 15 videos and he's already got ads. And he looked at my YouTube page and my settings are the same as the way he, as his settings. So, he doesn't under, we're not really sure why there are no ads showing. Um, but he's making like 10, 10 or 15 bucks a month. <laughs> you know, if, you know, if I could bring in a hundred bucks a month just by you guys watching some ads occasionally and clicking on something if you if you find it find it something interesting, um, you know I could have, <laughs> I could better afford to have a buy cameras and, and and other things, but you know it is what it is, and and I'm kind of nervous to go in and screw around too much with the YouTube account because I don't want to fuck it up. <laughs> I've half considered creating a new YouTube account to try getting the AdSense working on that account and then moving my videos to that new account. But when you do that, you start from scratch with no subscribers. I don't know. And YouTube's impossible to get a hold of for help. So, I don't know. Coming up on 50 minutes here, guys, so that camera will stop at 60 minutes automatically. rain up here. It's supposed to be a nice day today, I thought. But, uh... Oh. I was a complete moron on Friday. As you know, I'm driving the 06 Legacy. Love the car. Looks great. I, yeah, I just really, really enjoy driving it. I decided that uh, Friday I was going to go and hang out with, hang out with my friend Chad, the Rat from the Rat Race Losers, and I was going to take him up. I've got BJ gave me this little portable kerosene heater. It's a smaller version of what I already have. Uh, it's designed to be it's a, it's a radiant style heater rather than a convection style heater. Uh, smaller, less BTUs, but it's designed to be used in a smaller area. Um, and you sit in front of it and it radiates heat out at you. Um, anyway, I decided I, I'm going to take that up to him for use in the motorhome, the motorless home. We hang out at the motorhome sometimes and just chat, whatever. And you can put that, that heater on a table, you know, and, and use it. Anyway, dumbass me, when you transport this thing, so it's got a it's got a jug that comes out that you you fill with kerosene, put the jug in. Dumbass me forgot to take the jug out. It's in the back. It didn't tip over, but it was sloshing around and it dumped kerosene all over the back of my Subaru. Fortunately, I have one of those plastic, you know, like catch things in the back. But didn't get it all. The carpet on the edges was ruined, pretty much. And, well, not ruined, but it got, you know. So I ended up taking the car down to the car wash and <laughs> took all those pieces out of the car, sprayed them off, used the soap brush. Basically, I was shampooing it, sprayed it off vacuumed it dry with the wet dry vac they have there and um, I 
put it all back, and the next day it was still pretty stinky. So I, I, I took the pieces up on the side. There's two removable pieces of, of the floor. It's like where the spare tire is, the lower material. And there's two ones on the side. I took them out and took some Dawn and put them in the bathtub and scrubbed them with Dawn, thinking, you know, Dawn would surely cut the, cut the kerosene, cut every other form of oil or grease I've ever tried. Hot water as hot as I could stand it. I soap them up, rinse them off, and it didn't matter. I kept rinsing and rinsing, and I kept seeing kerosene. You could see the oil coming off. I don't know. And they still faintly smelled of kerosene, so I... And then the carpet came... The glue came unglued. It came unglued. The carpet came unglued from the backing. So I was like, ah, fuck. I just I'll go to a salvage yard and find some new pieces. I guess I don't know. So fortunately, the car does not smell like kerosene too badly. It's already faded pretty good, but just a really stupid boneheaded thing to do. All I had to do was take that can out, and it would have been fine. But. I'd go around a corner and the, the kerosene would slosh a little. There's only about that much kerosene in the bottom of that. Um, it would slosh a little bit. The low, level would appear to drop, so it would dump more kerosene, and then it would overflow. It would just it would just kept dumping. Every time I'd go around a corner, it was dumping more kerosene in there, and then it overflowed. Fucking stupid. And I had, there was a couple of boxes in the back, all totally saturated with kerosene. A couple of books. Uh, fortunately, kerosene does, it, it, vap it does vaporize away eventually, so, you know, they'll dry out, but. Alright guys, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna, it's about time, I'm going to call it call at the end. I'm gonna let it I'm gonna go ahead and let it go. Um, that one will stop at sixty minutes and then this one will continue and I may just let it run and ah, the power ball is up to one thirty hundred and thirty one million dollars. Mega millions is fifty three but it's a while till it's up to uh, 600 mil 670 million like it was a few weeks ago. Oh. It's really looking like rain or storm or something over there. is always
here. It's really bad. Oh. Oh. Oh.
Oh.